dividends. What are they and why are they important to your investment strategy? When people think of dividends, they think of retirees looking for safety, security, and predictable cash payments. Most of the big, exciting tech stocks that snatch all the headlines don't pay dividends. But dividend stocks are hardly just for retirees, and the dividends they pay are far more important to the economy and to your investment strategy than just a modest quarterly payment. Dividends are the beating heart of the stock market and one of the best and one of the best predictors of how a company will perform over time. Before we jump into this video, if you haven't yet liked this video, it does help with the YouTube algorithm. It also shows us that you appreciate and enjoy this type of content. After that, subscribe to the channel. And also hit that notification bell so you guys can stay up to date on our latest and upcoming video content. So what are dividends? Some companies give a portion of their profits back to their shareholders as periodic cash or more rarely stock payments. Those payments are called dividends. Companies pay dividends to entice new shareholders and to reward their existing ones. Companies that pay dividends tend to be older, well-established, and in command of a large market share. New companies that are just starting out have to reinvest every dollar back into the company in order to grow. That said, many of the biggest and most profitable companies in the world, Google, Facebook and Amazon, to name a few, don't pay any dividends at all, despite sitting on hundreds of billions of dollars in cash. Some investors prefer non-dividend stocks because dividends are taxed at the regular rate. They would rather the company reinvest its profits in the hopes that it will grow and the stock price will rise. Dividends are paid on a per share basis. If a stock pays a 10 cent dividend, you would earn $10 on 100 shares. Keep in mind these key facts about dividends. With the exception of options, dividends are the only way to profit from owning a stock without selling some of your stake in the company. When interest rates are low, dividends can provide better yields than bonds. Unlike bonds, Dividend stocks can grow in value while still distributing cash payments, but also unlike bonds, the principal is not guaranteed. Dividend stocks are sub subject to the whims of the market. Dividend stocks can give retirees and other income investors cash to meet expenses without forcing them to sell shares and deplete the pool of funds they depend on to live. Dividends are an indication of overall financial health, only companies that are mature and secure can afford to make regular cash payments to all their shareholders. Dividend growers tend to be elite performers. Paying a dividend is one thing, but the companies that consistently increase their dividends over time, dividend growers, command an extra degree of respect from investors. Consider the dividend aristocrats. A small group of stocks on the S&P 500, there are currently 65. The aristocrats represent a kind of all-star team of dividend growers. To make the list, a company has to increase its dividends every year for at least 25 years straight without missing a single year, regardless of recession, bubble, downturn, or cash. Only the most stable, best managed, and most financially secure companies can pull off such an impressive financial feat, and it shows in the results. A 2021 report from Hartford Funds shows an unmistakable connection between growing dividends and shareholder gains. If you had invested $100 in 1973, here's what you would have had in 2020 depending on the dividend growth policy of the companies you invested it in. Dividend cutters and eliminators, $56. Dividend non-payers, $844. No change in dividend policy, $2,189. Dividend growers, 
equal weighted S&P 500 index, uh, $764. Dividend payers, $6,946. And dividend growers and initiators, $11,364. If you're willing to pay a 0.35% expense ratio, the ProShares Noble ETF tracks the S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats Index. And if you guys are interested in learning more about this list of 65 companies on the Dividends Aristocrat list, we actually have a video that we made covering the full list of all of the companies who are currently on it in 2021 right now. So definitely check that video out so you can make sure to consider adding one, two, or a few of them into your portfolio, if not going the ETF route. Dividends, the slow, steady drip of supersized gains. It's not just market performance. Dividends can have a powerful compounding effect when you reinvest them instead of harvesting them as cash payouts. Dividend reinvestment plans, DRIPS, allow you to do that exactly. Allow you to do exactly that, excuse me. <laughs> when you reinvest more dividends, you own more shares, which then pay more dividends that will then be reinvested to buy even more dividend paying shares. Over time, the snowball effect creates a self-sustaining, over time, the snowball effects creates a self-sustaining wealth generating machine that serves as the backbone of the stock market. In the 50 years between 1970 and 2020, 84% of the total return of the S&P 500 came from reinvested dividends in the magic of compound growth, according to the Hartford Fund study. If you're wondering whether you should enroll in a drip, consider the following. If you had invested $10,000 in the S&P 500 in 1960 without reinvesting your dividends, you would have had $627,000, uh, by 2020. However, if you reinvested your dividends, you'd have just shy of $3.85 million. So hopefully, my friends, this article, this information has helped to better inform you on the power of dividends and what they are and why you should consider investing in them. As we mentioned, we did make a video that covers the 65 dividend aristocrats. And we also have a ton of weekly videos where we are contributing $25 a week to our dividend portfolio, which you can check out here on the channel. So make sure if you haven't liked this video yet to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of those latest and upcoming videos. But feel free to comment down below. Do you have any dividend stocks, any uh, dividend companies in your portfolio? Or are you just focused on the growth side of things? Did you, are you, are you, you know, maybe you're young, you're 21 and you're like, eh, I don't need the, the, the money right now. I would rather have it just go towards growth companies like Google or Facebook or Amazon, where I expect the stock price to go up so much more over the past, over the next 10, 15, 20 years. I'm not relying on the dividends. I don't need that. Or, you know, maybe you're someone in the in that middle range, you're in your 30s and 40s, and you do have some dividends in there and you do want to see, you know, the 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 monthly or quarterly dividend contribution help your portfolio grow because you're you're you you don't have as much time on your side and you are trying to play things a little more safe. So you want companies that are more reliable and maybe their stock price won't fluctuate as much as well, but you can at least say, you know, or you're confident that you will be getting your earned dividends. And that's where, as this article touched on so much, uh, retirees specifically generally love dividend portfolios and dividend companies because they get those weekly or excuse me, monthly or quarterly contributions that will allow them to live off of that money. Where are you at in your journey as you continue to move forward towards financial, towards financial freedom in your financial independence journey? Where are you? Comment down below. Let us know. And what do you think about dividends? Do you have any in your portfolio? If so, who do you have in your portfolio? We have a, as I mentioned, $25 a week 
uh, dividend portfolio. Yes, we are contributing $25 a week. And right now we're over 15% as of today, July 24th. So we'll see where things go with that portfolio, but feel free to check that out as well. We'd love to hear what you guys think about our portfolio and if we should consider swapping out one or two or any companies, maybe adding an ETF. What do you guys think? What, what do you, what's your approach to your dividend uh, investing strategy? And um, like I said, if you haven't yet start your dividend portfolio or start investing in general, we do have some links down below to M1 Finance where you can start and fund your account and get I think it's $50 right now if you do it. Um, usually it's, it's been $30 in the past. It might be 30 in the future, but right now it's $50 if you start and fund your account. And we also have a link to Webull where you can start and fund your account and get free stocks with Webull um, and ton of other goodies down below. So definitely check those links out as well. But on that note, much appreciation for watching and appreciate your time. If you haven't started your uh, investing journey yet, like I said, click those links down below in the description area. But all right, my friends, you already know we got to keep it moving, but I'll see you in the next video. Peace.